back to give you guys the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 10 episode 5 Petty Party. So it picks up where it left off with the whole Kenya and Kim. Now, I want to know where the fuck Corey was because he came, it seemed like he came in a little bit too fucking fast. And I think it was um, Color Me Pink that says that he's always there as backup where these are women. <laughs> you don't need to be back up for your wife, especially when your wife starts some shit. <clears throat> and Kim says in her confessional, like, I posted this, but it wasn't for you to see, but it was a public post. So anybody could have seen it. And I, I'm, I, hey, look, here's the thing. I, I don't necessarily check for motherfuckers that I don't feel it for. But if you already came at me sideways, I'm going to make sure that I got some shit to tag your ass the next time you try to come at me. Because I'm going to be honest, <clears throat> the last time Kim and uh, Kenya got into it, Kenya didn't get her the way that I would have liked to, but she got it this time. And you have Kim, Sheree, and Croy at Porsche's house. And I'm trying to figure out, like, why is Croy sitting amongst the women? Just, just, just saying. But I guess he wanted to get him some camera time. And Sheree uh, brought, you know, carried the bone. And it wasn't even accurate because, well, fuck it. Kim had mentioned how, you know, she brought up my daughter. And then, you know, I heard injured son. And unless Bravo edited that out, I didn't hear her say shit about an injured son. You know what I'm saying? But again, this is Kim put 20 on 10. Now, what I'm going to say is, <clears throat> was Kenya wrong for bringing up the kid? Yes and no. Now, in a lot of instances, yes, kids are off limits. But at the same exact time, <clears throat> Kenya's husband should have been off limits. So the fact that Kim felt that, okay, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to come for your husband. Well, she came for the kid. It is what the fuck it is. And it's just like, had you not came for... Now, it's one thing had Kim just came for Kenya, but you came for her husband. So she came for your daughter. And what I didn't like is that Kim acted a plump fool in Nene's house. But Nene ain't say shit to Kim. I don't know, like, I feel like she's kind of scared to say something to her, but I'm sorry, you not finna be up at my motherfucking place and calling a fucking fool. I don't give a fuck who you is, what you're doing, we ain't finna fucking have it. But, see, me being me, you show up to a party that I wasn't expecting y'all to show up to, your ass gonna be greeted by that motherfucking dope, the same one your ass came in. But again, that's just me. That's just me. So... Nene doesn't like the fact that uh, Cynthia is caping for Kenya. Now, some people might feel that, you know, she's just doing this as a storyline, but I feel that she feels a kind of way because I think we all know that um, <clears throat> Nene doesn't like to share her friends. And, but at the same exact time, if y'all think about it, Cynthia would go caping for Nene way back when, but because she was pretty much saying that, look, sent, I mean, I sent the uh, Kenya was on her best behavior, she ain't do nothing, that was all Kim, but it's just facts. But I can appreciate Cynthia doing that because in any situation, everybody blames things on Kenya, and I think the reason that I can relate is growing up, I ain't gonna fucking lie, I popped off on a lot of motherfucking people. But that's because my thing is, you not finna talk to me like you ain't got no sense. I got one mama, I got one daddy. If you ain't them, you ain't finna fucking disrespect me. So I would always pop the fuck off. And my mom, she hated that. It was to the point where my mother would always side with everyone else. Because if somebody came to her, you know, saying that I did some shit, she wouldn't get my side of the story. It'd just be like, okay, well, that's my son. That's how the fuck he is. And she would side with them. <clears throat> and even if I was justified in my actions, I was always wrong. And it actually took one incident of my family for the first time. <laughs> and I don't know how many years actually telling my mom, like, no, what your son is telling you is right. This is exactly how the shit went. And it was since that day, you know, my mom, you know, 
she knows how the fuck I get down, but she knows that, okay, shit, if I pop the fuck off on somebody, it's for a good reason. So I kind of feel how Kenya is in the situation. Like, can't you be on some shady shit and some shit? Of course she does. Of course she is, you know? So then we get to Candy. So she's back from shooting for Essence. Sheree comes and, you know, she brings a bone and even Don Juan was like, you, you, you got to be careful. You might want to get the other side because Sheree don't always come with the facts. And she even brings up the whole injured son thing. And Sheree even said in her confession, was just like, well, I don't recall that being said. Well, you should have never said it. You should have pretty much said, okay, well, this is what I saw. This is what Kim said afterwards. But don't come saying this shit like it's fucking facts. And Sheree's putting together a girl trip in San Francisco. Candy was apprehensive, but when she found out that both Kenya and Kim was going, she was like, okay, well, I have to fucking miss that. Cynthia's with Noelle. Noelle says that, you know, she's going to live her life for her. What the fuck? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. She's going to uh, live her life for her. And her boyfriend doesn't like that because he's all or nothing. So pretty much what she's saying is just that, you know, it's, you know, it's almost like Mariah Mar Mar Carey's butterfly. You know, if he should return to me, then we're truly meant to be. The whole thing is, let us both live our lives because we're still young. And if we come back together, so be it. So, Kenya and Cynthia, uh, we found out that Kenya's grandmother passed at 86. She was battling Alzheimer's. Uh, uh, this grandmother is her uh, father's mother. The uh, same uh, grandmother that actually raised her when her mother wanted to give her up for adoption and they actually, and she actually had a, a video of her grandmother speaking about how she wasn't going to let that happen and how Kenya is her daughter and that was that was so beautiful that was so beautiful and I commend Kenya I think she's probably saving face for the camera because I didn't already tell everybody I, I found out my dukes that passed away I ain't going to be good to no fucking body it ain't finna be no, I'm sitting here trying to be strong for a motherfucker. No. No. Like, when my father passed away, y'all kind of saw me grieving. When I went home, I was strong for my brothers. Fuck that shit. I found out my dukes is gone. I ain't being strong for nobody. Like, I'm going to get your ass ugly cry. I'm going to get your ass, I, I'm trying to catch my breath cry. Like, I'm going to give it all. Shit, fuck that shit. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> But she did say that um, her grandmother met her husband and she kind of felt that once she knew that Kenya was um, with someone that would take care of her, that was her cue to exit. And I do feel like, you know, sometimes when people are, I guess you could say on a deathbed, that they sometimes hold out until certain things happen. I don't know. Let me not talk about it because I don't know how to properly explain it. Moving on. <clears throat> Let me see. Nene pretty much is with Marlo, and she said that she's going to surprise the girls with Marlo. So she's not going to tell them that Marlo is going to show up, and they're just going to have to deal with Marlo when she gets there. Kind of shady and fucked up, but it's what it is. And she even said that she finds uh, Cynthia sick enough for Kenya to be weird. She's jealous. Whatever. <clears throat> so now they're in San Francisco, and on the bus, I guess, going to. Uh, wherever they're going to be staying to the hotel uh you know Sheree it, it gets brought up about uh a guy named Tyrone that was mentioned in previous seasons when uh Sheree and Nene got into it you know with the whole Trump check thing but we do know from the blogs that she's dating somebody that's in jail she even mentions that he's incarcerated this and third whatever so at dinner Sheree um wants to address the elephant in the room which is Porsche and Nini. So it's the whole taking food off the table. Cause that's what uh Porsche was saying. Hell, I feel like you're trying to take food off my table. Now, to be clear, for what it's worth, given the circumstances, Nini really didn't have power on the show because she wasn't on the show, but she did try to, she really tried to get Cynthia fired. Cause we're gonna see Cynthia talk about that like kind of cryptically in the next episode but Nene was just like well shit you took food off Phaedra's plate because you see she's the only one that's not here I was like oh ho 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 and you know um, 
what's her name? Porsche was just like, well, we all need to be held accountable for our actions. And Candy's just like, I know you ain't talking. And that's true because not once has Portia truly came out and said, you know, accepted ownership of what she did. She just blamed everything on Phaedra. And, you know, Nene even told her, like, no, I'm the one that helped you stay here. And they even did the flashback of at the reunion. She was trying to talk her down, like, look, no, because you had King talking about, so she should be fired. But you had Nene right there saying, like, you know, pretty much trying to coach her, get it back together. Now, am I the only one that caught? Marlo was sitting between them, kind of refereeing, but Marlo moved her seat. I guess she was just like, shit, I want to see this shit go the fuck down. And it's a whole lot of back and forth, and that's pretty much where it ends. So, it's going to pick up next week. Was it a good episode? Eh, not really. And I'm kind of getting tired of Bravo and doing a whole cliffhanger shit, but that's what the fuck Bravo does. So, that's my review. That's all I got. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, next review is going to be uh, Love of Hip Hop New York. I can't wait for Miami because Miami seems like it's going to be lit. And y'all know Trick Daddy ain't got no damn sense. I know Trick Daddy say some off-the-wall shit that can be offensive, but I like the fact that he is uncensored unfiltered go say what the fuck is on his mind so i cannot wait for that so that's all i got please uh rate come subscribe and share and i will see you guys tomorrow for love hip-hop peace